Welcome, Welcome back. back to Point Blank, and we are talking about the stressful undergraduate life. And we do have a comment from a viewer. Let's take a look at this. It's by Elki Fish, and he says, "When I was a student, I was very relaxed. Perhaps it's the curriculum that's getting too stressful. I think it's up to each individual to call out if they need help, especially if they are above fifteen years of age." So, what do you guys think? Is it true that we should just go to somebody rather than you know have somebody spot you know a troubled oh, student? Actually, that's why mm. they say the curriculum is too stressful now mm. <laughs> as well. So, are students more mm. stressed out? Because of the curriculum. Okay, uh, I would like to agree with uh, what the person actually said. Uh, maybe the curriculum is getting, I won't say stressful, but there are a lot more workload than in the past. I mean, that's what I personally feel. Mm -hmm. Is maybe it's because like uh, you, you want to portray Singapore as an education hub, and we are inviting a lot of foreign talents and foreign students over. So eventually, it leads to a lot of competition. Yeah. So with regards to that, so probably you might feel the pressure as to. Seeing the workload increase and stuff like mm. that, so with regards to that, of course, I think there is a certain amount of stress. And again, like what is it? When you feel that you are stressed, I think it's your own personal responsibility to go and look for help. I mean, no point sitting down there and expecting people to come to you, mm. thinking that you no, know, they will actually support you, because I don't think in most cases that's going to work. Mm. So when you actually feel that you are in trouble, I think we should go and look for seek either professional help, or at least you can go and just talk to your friends or professors, whoever they are. Mm, okay, you you uh, mentioned something about an increased competitiveness yeah. because we have more foreign yeah. talent in Singapore. So let's switch over to our foreign, foreign talent. talent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you what kind of stress? I mean, stress do you feel? And do you feel like you're you know what they would say you know threatening? Are you spoiling the market? Yeah. Well, I don't think we're spoiling the market. I think we're bringing the standards of the market up. <laughs> but that being said, yeah. um. Yeah, I do agree that the curriculum, I wouldn't say curriculum has been strictly academic curriculum per se, that is getting um, more stressful, but it's overall the expectation because right now they are pushing a lot more on, uh, like I mentioned earlier, extracurricular activities as well. And when you look at it that way, um, especially for us um, who are scholars, we have three points of contention. One is that we have to do academically well. Secondly, we are expected to be all-rounded, so we have to have a cur uh, strong curricular, curricular activities. activities mm. yeah. And the third point is that our curves, our the standards that we are uh, graded on is not just the entire campus, but more amongst our own uh, scholars. So that brings that level even higher. Mm. So in that sense, um, especially for ourselves, it can be pretty stressful mm. sometimes when you have to balance all of this at the same time. And the way the education system being structured, um, I mean, I just now Dr. Huawei and Sanka himself have mentioned about personal responsibility and prioritizing but in some cases it becomes a case where you have to you have no choice but the way it's designed you are forced to focus on academic despite your interest because th that is what gets you your bread and butter so to speak and what gets you through and sometimes I find that a little sad in that mm. sense that a student cannot always pursue all of his interests mm. But it's forced and pigeonholed into the academic system. Mm. Yeah. That's a very good point. So mm. in Singapore, it's all about academic. So yeah. do you, I mean, we have our lecturers here. What do you think? Is it our curriculum that you know is not too? It's not flexible enough to help our students cope with stress. Well, again, my perspective is that <coughs> the these are the standards that we set, and in, in the end, it's really the students' responsibility to balance, mm. you know, the the uh, their interests with the school. Uh, academic responsibilities. I think in the end, um, you're right you know, to say that you know, there is this element of that uh, you need to do your co-curricular activities well, you need to have GPAs, because in the end, when you go for interviews, yeah, your the, the interview will be looking at, oh, okay, your GPA is above a certain grade, that, that passes the first criteria. Then turn, turn to the next page, ah, you've been very active in all your uh, co-curricular co activities. So, so usually, so the perception among students is that uh, employers are looking for all roundedness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because of that, it filters down to the student community and everybody's pressure. Right. So I think in, in a way in a way it's really both sides, you know, where the students themselves, the employers expectation because the market is really so tight mm -hmm. and also like I said earlier, parental pressure, societal pressure. So it's really learning to balance the, uh, the uh, because we cannot say that, you know, it's a co the curriculum mm -hmm. that's at fault. Mm -hmm. It's really how every one of us as individuals 
learn to balance off those responsibilities. Okay, right. Mm. How they react to the this kind mm. of situation and the curriculum, right? Yeah, mm. that's right. Mm. So, can yeah. I respond to yes, that? Yes, yeah, <laughs> of, course. <laughs> of course. I have two points there. I think, yeah, if eventually it is individual choice, mm. right? Uh, you are right, I agree. There are certain expectations and it is structured in a way that you have to perform somehow, you know, to maintain your scholarship, this and that. But, it doesn't work on you until you agree with that, right? But the point there is, when you make a choice, you choose the consequences. If you say, I want to maintain my scholarship, I want to have a 4.0 GPA, mm -hmm. and then you are choosing the life that you probably are have, you know, you made that choice that you have to spend most of your life studying so that you are going to push your GPA up. If you want a life that is not dominated by academic, academic activities, then you should let go of the GPA part. We cannot eat a cake and have it, right? <laughs> so we have to make a choice. Everything is a trade-off. You see, everything is a trade-off. Uh, and the second point is, second point is, what is my second point? about choices, oh. about making a choice, you know, I choose to be a scholar and that's why I have to go through this path. Well, I think <laughs> that may not always be a fair statement in the sense that um, all of us come from different economic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Some of us, it's not a choice. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. something that you, you have a scholarship, you have to maintain it, and sometimes it becomes... Um, while you may not favor academics so much, but it's a case where if I don't even have this, can I even afford uh, an undergraduate education, for example, if I don't want to be burdened with loan, for example, then that leaves me with no choice, but I have to balance, I have to find the balance and I have to struggle to make it work. Mm -hmm. while, um, while it is doable, but it's something that we have to strive for and therefore it increases the burden, the workload and the stress. Okay. I, now my Great. second point came back. <laughs> yes. 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 Second point. The, second, the second point is, ask yourself the question, so what? Right? You're saying, okay, I want to, yeah, I may have the financial need, therefore I want to maintain a 3.5 maybe and above GPA. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you find yourself stressed out, then you need to ask the question, so what if I don't do that? What are the consequences? Again, can I handle that? What is the worst case scenario, right? Mm -hmm. So what, as you said, okay, if you lose your scholarship, if you don't maintain a certain GPA level, okay, you may lose some privileges. But the beauty of our life is when you lose something, you always gain something, right? You mm -hmm. don't really have to maintain always a 4.0 GPA to be mm -hmm. successful or to be happy. Mm -hmm. What is your goal in life, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, to start up, to be an entrepreneur, we are promoting that a lot recently in Singapore. You don't really need a 4.0 GPA, right? <laughs> That's not what they are looking <laughs> for. Uh, That's not where they are. Sankar disagrees. Sankar has a look on his face like, um, <laughs> are you no, sure? Are you sure? 4.0 <laughs> 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 is not important. Yeah. I wouldn't really say it's not important, but you know, I think it would still count. Like having a good GPA or your cap or whatever, like getting a first class honors, of course, totally differentiate a person who got a second class lower or a third class honors. Uh, but mm -hmm. like adding on to what both of them said, uh, some of them actually like I won't really agree like you have to give up one so they can get the other one. Because uh, from what I understand is a lot of my friends, okay, they're all, most of them are on their way to their first class honors, whoever they are. <laughs> they are really doing very well in their co-curricular activities. Like some of them I know from uh, NUS Entrepreneurship Society, I mean they are doing very well. Uh, especially this person from my department is doing very well and he actually like has to go out of Singapore for his CCA activities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But another day he's still doing very well in regards to his academics. So mm -hmm. he really knows how to balance both of them and he's still on his way to his second class low upper or first class honors. And uh, adding on to what, what you said, like I think the honors would actually matter for the fact that end of the day someone would actually like look up to you and when I say that hey I came out with a uh, first class honors like their respect is still there compared mm -hmm. to, hey, you know, I just got the third class honors. And uh, of course, there's also this part whereby I think your salary would also be differentiated when it comes to uh, government service. Mm -hmm. So, the civil that, service. Yeah. So, I think it would still matter. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. <still> matter. <laughs> and so, uh, that's exactly what I meant when I say you have to agree with that standard to be judged by that standard, sure. right? Mm -hmm. If you say, I care, I want to be number one all the time, obviously, you put yourself in that position mm -hmm. that you really want to get that. Yes. Right? If you say, okay, yeah, it will be nice, and or if you say, I am not worth less if I'm not number one, so what if I'm number two, so what even if I'm number 12? I'm a good mm -hmm. person, I make contributions, I make positive changes in people's lives. That's what matters to me. 
Mm. So you need to really figure out what you want from life, and then you define your own life accordingly. Don't let other people's standards be imposed on you. That's right. Okay, for that, I think mm. I'll agree. Like, yeah. it's up to me as to like how I want to look at the system and see whether I want to be like look as a person who got a low grade honors or something. At the end of the year, even if I get a the class honors, so what? I mean. I can mm -hmm. succeed in other areas. If I'm going to look at it from that point of view, mm -hmm. I think I'll agree with uh, whatever she said. Yeah. Okay, good. We got an agreement here. <laughs> yeah. So let's <laughs> look at uh, another concept. comment from our yeah, viewer. Yeah, we have more comments. Yeah, have more comments. Comment. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay, Alfred. Okay, should we go with Blade 101, 101. first? Okay, he says, I think the paper chase has just gotten more feverish with mm -hmm. a more developed Singapore. A degree is is light, is like a, a right, right hand. hand. <laughs> oh, right now. now. And not just having a degree, but excelling at it too. Yeah. And Alki Fish uh, has a reply. Blake, Blake, I think a degree is not enough. Now's the day. <laughs> <laughs> you throw a stone, you hit a master's hole. <laughs> master, wow, like everyone has yeah. a master's degree. But with the advent of newer social technologies, I think young people have more options to communicate, not less. And games have just become the convenient scapegoat. I think they're talking about uh, being addicted to gaming. Agree that everything is a choice. Sadly for me, I never had the choice to be a scholar. Mm. I may not take it where I offered to, as I'm happy to be a rickshaw puller. <laughs> Maybe you will need, you will need a degree to be a rickshaw puller next time. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, who knows? You might have to be a rickshaw. One, one point I have uh, is actually following on from what uh, Huawei is mentioning about... Mm. I think as individuals, we really need to know what our personal goals in life are, mm. what are our capacities. I mean, if like like me when I was when I was your age, <laughs> <laughs> not too long ago, not too, not too long ago, <laughs> like, maybe like last year. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember that uh, I was just an average student. Yeah, you know, it, I realized that getting honors and all that was is never going to be something that's within my capacity at a point of time. Because I look at sometimes I look at, I, I look at I look in envy at my friends. You know they, um, two three of them. You know in my batch, we were very close. Five of us were close. Out of, out of five, mm -hmm. three of them went to honors, and then then the other two of us just average. You know kind of thing. So, but I realized that it's what I want, or, or knowing what I want in my life that's important. Because I knew when I graduated in the early nineties, I knew one day. What I wanted to be is to be a counsellor. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So so looking back all these years, I'm living my dream. Yeah. yeah. I knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I'm living my dream. Mm -hmm. Of course of course the, the intelligence and the maturity came much later. <laughs> <laughs> so you realize yeah. in retrospect you realize, oh actually this is what I really wanted to do yeah, and have right. you. Well, very good discussion. Mm -hmm. Um well I, I think I agree that for, for foreign students sometimes it's maybe a lot more adjustment because of coming to a new country, new culture. So mm -hmm. I, I spoke to some uh, students mm -hmm. and find out their reactions uh, to the recent events, as all of us know, and the kind of pressures that they face and how they deal with it as well. Mm. Yeah. Let's roll it then. Mm. Tara, you, you're from Indonesia and you've been here for two years. So uh, what, what was your reaction when you first heard the story? Actually, I was very surprised because uh, I can't imagine him stabbing the professor and then he jump and kill himself. The day when the news just came, uh, all like a lot of my friends from Indonesia, they all messaged me like, "Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear all of uh, all of the things?" And my mom also called me. Then she asked, "Did you hear about that?" Okay. Then she said, "It's okay if you get bad grades. It's okay." <laughs> and I know that high school. The high school was near to mine last time in mm. Indonesia and it is known for a very very smart student school and I just can't believe it because I just can't believe how such a smart student can just kill himself because of grades. My view viewpoint is he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm. I mean the student m might not intend to actually hurt him but the thing is actually I read the news is the professor tried to help the student but Unfortunately, he was targeted as the channel to release the stress in a, diff in a wrong manner. So we feel very sorry to this professor. I was surprised and actually I was not surprised at the same time. Uh, I mean, first of all, it's, uh, it's definitely a tragedy to have like uh, this case happening. But at the same time, I, I always thought that, you know, like due to the nat nature of the competitiveness in Singapore, right, like all our education system, like, there will definitely be times where people break down. But this is, I suppose, this is one of the more... Uh, 
serious cases. La. We are stressed because we want to get high GPA, we want to score very good at the class, but if you're getting really stressed and you're killing yourself because you want to get good grades, then what's the point of it? During my initial years in SMU, my first year, I actually I had a lot of difficulty as well adjusting to the curriculum, mm. uh, especially with all the math and all that, because I was very strong in my foundations. So, uh, I mean, there were times where I really felt, you know, like, uh, like, you know, like, I was going to, like, break down and stuff sometimes, but, you know, it's, as I put, said it earlier, it's always about the friends and, uh, like, you know, like for me as well. So if I'm de- de-stress, right, so we just leave the work aside, you know, perhaps uh, hang out with our friends, you know, like, or hang out with your CCA, you know, in school, you know, like say you can do some drumming, you can do some dancing as well. Because we are foreign students, so we, we are facing some difficulties, some um, local students c- could, couldn't imagine. I mean... What for are the problems that the local yeah, students couldn't imagine? So for example, we have to, uh, for example, first of all, maybe financial difficulties. For some of us, some of us, we have to support ourselves. I mean, to actually, you have to find your own accommodations. You have to have to uh, deal with interpersonal relationships. It is it is inevitable. You feel lonely sometimes. Even you have friends. My friends, she, she really can't cope. Couldn't cope with the stress. Then she quit and went back to China. Even I, it's pretty often for me. Okay, I just want to. I just want to finish my life. It's just that's it. Let me sleep for forever. I mean, never wake up. But at the end of the day, you still need to face face those difficulties and challenges. So you're saying that it's actually not that unimaginable actually to have such thoughts going through your mind, but it's what you deal with it. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. It's just very. I think it's very pretty common. The lucky thing is we have a very uh, strong culture, strong environment that uh, professors are very close to their students. Sometimes I talk to my prof just about the course material and stuff, but not really, not so much about the stressful part. Okay, so your relationship with the prof is just your your, your it's more of yeah. yeah, it's more of academic relationship. I also know some friends who are really close with their professor, like uh, really just hang out and talk, or maybe drink coffee with their professor. I do tell my prof some problems. You no, know, uh, some of the professors that I'm closer with, uh, if not most of the times, I approach friends. Uh, in fact, some of the peer helpers in school, they are very friendly. Mm. And uh, there's a wellness centre in SMU. You know, there are like many, many things inside that wellness centre that you never think of, like massage chairs, uh, pillows. You, you, they, you know, you, uh, you're welcome to go in there and like trash your thoughts, just uh, lie down for a massage, you know, if you're really feeling that stressed up. Yeah, so these are the many, many avenues that we can use to like handle our work and you know, perhaps daily life stress.